Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be going over the classic three utilities problem. So if you've not seen it before, let me just quickly describe it, but you probably have seen it before. And in today's video, I'm going to be proving the solution. Okay, so we have three houses, house one, house two, and house three, and we have three utilities, gas, electricity, and water. And what we want to do is connect each of the houses, one, two, and three, to each of gas, electricity, and water. So we want to make some, some pipes from gas to one, gas to two, and gas to three. And the same thing for electric electricity, so connecting houses one, two, and three, and then water connecting one, two, and three as well. Okay, and now that's a problem, and we want to know, is it possible to do that without crossing the wires? So of course we want to connect, say, electricity to house two, but we're not allowed to do this, because that would cross the wire going from gas to three. So instead we'd have to go around that wire somehow, um, like this maybe, like so, and that's perfectly fine. And we want to know, is this possible? Okay, because obviously we've got to connect electricity to house one and house three as well, and water to house one, two, and three as well. Okay, so I really encourage you to have a play with this problem. Just grab some paper and uh, just scribble some lines and see if you can solve this. And I'm going to get into a solution as to whether or not you can do this in just a second. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, so the solution to this problem, sadly, is no. You cannot connect all of the houses up to each of the utilities. If you had to play around with it, you might have found a way to connect two of the houses up to all three utilities, and then the final house up to just two of the utilities. Um, but if you try and do that third one, that third house to that final utility, you're gonna have to cross a wire somehow. Um, but today I'm gonna prove it. So what I'm going to be doing is essentially converting this problem into a graph theory problem and then using Euler's formula, which I'll explain in just a second. OK, so let's just quickly go over a little bit of graph theory. So I've converted our diagram now. I've just taken away the houses and drawn some circles. These are known as vertices. OK, so, and so we have houses one, two and three and then gas, electricity and water, each nodes. And then when I connect them up with these lines, these lines are called edges. OK, now what we want to do is see if this graph is planar, which basically means can I draw lines from each of these, which is what we want to do to each of these uh, without any of the lines crossing. And I claim that the answer is no. And to do that, we're going to be using Euler's formula, which says that F equals 2 plus E minus V. Now, I'm not going to prove that in this uh, video, but if you want to prove it, you just do it by induction. But let me just explain what each of the terms are first. F stands for faces, E stands for edges and V stands for vertices. OK, so let's just draw uh, just any old graph, any planar graph, like so. Let's say that's our graph. Um, why not add one there? So the number of faces in this graph is 1, 2, and then this unbounded face on the outside we also include as a face. So in this case, f equals 3. The number of edges is 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six. Okay, and the number of vertices, V, is one, two, three, four, five, like so. Okay, so if we just compute this, just to check that all this formula is true in this case, on the left-hand side, we just have three, and on the right-hand side, we have two plus six minus five, and of course, that is indeed three. So Euler's formula checks out in this case, and this is just kind of to exemplify what each of the terms in this guy means, and just to show you an example where this works. This works in general, and as I say, you can prove this by induction on E. So, uh, sorry, not on E, on F. So if you start off with the case where F is one, so you have just one face, i.e. this unbounded face uh, on the out this unbounded region on the outside, then that's what's known as just a tree. And a property of trees is that um, a tree has exactly uh, one more uh, vertex than it has edges. And then this thing on the left-hand side, you have one. On the right-hand side, you have two plus something minus one bigger than that something. So you've got two minus one, which is one, which is equal to the number of faces. So that works in the base case. And then to continue by induction, you just use the fact that essentially when you remove an edge, a particular edge from a graph, you're kind of merging two faces together. Anyway, I'm not going to go over the proof uh, of that in, in this video, but that's just kind of a, an overview of it. Uh, let's return to our problem about the gas, electricity and water. Suppose we can connect each three of the utilities to each three of the houses. That means we want to build a planar graph from these three uh, vertices here to those three vertices there. Okay, so what would it look like? Well, let's have a look. If we just plug in this formula here, F is gonna equal two plus the number of edges. Well, the number of edges we would have if it were possible 
would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So nine in total. So two plus nine, the minus the number of vertices, which is six. So two plus nine minus six, and if you compute this, it's five. Okay, so the number of faces we'd expect to have would be five. Okay, but then we can ask ourselves, what is the minimum number of edges for each face? Well, if we just have a look at this guy here, because we can't connect a line from one to two, we're only connecting lines from one from this set of vertices to this set of vertices. It's what's known as a bipartite graph. Uh, the only way we can make a face is by going once down to this set of vertices, then once back up, then once back down to this set of vertices, and then back up again. So for example, something like this. Obviously the, the lines cross, but I'm not too worried about that. Perhaps let me make it a bit obvious. Just drawing the line out here, say. So this is a face. Okay, so this sort of shaded region here gives us one of the faces. And notice that it has four edges. And in fact, you can quite clearly see that any face must have at least four edges. So we can work out that the number of edges in this graph is going to be at least four times the number of faces. So four times f. But we've got to divide by two. And the reason we have to divide by two is because each face, uh, sorry, each edge has sort of two faces um, adjoining it. So if you look at this edge here, it's got this face here thing I've shaded in, but it's also got this unbounded region as well as a face. Um, so it's got two faces and that's kind of what we've got to divide by two. But we know that f equals five, so this guy here is just 20 over two, which is 10. So we've shown that the number of edges must be at least 10, but if we just go back to, uh, where is it, this guy here, I oh, know, sorry, that was my little particular example. If we go uh, back to just this diagram here, the number of edges, well, we know that it's gonna be one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, so nine. And this guy here is strictly greater than nine, and of course doesn't equal nine. Uh, so that's where we get our contradiction. So in fact, it's not possible to draw three lines from the set of gas, electricity, and water, each two houses one, two, and three. And that solves our problem, the key being Euler's formula. Um, and yeah, just using a bit of graph theory and expressing this problem into a graph theory problem, and using some graph theory tricks solves the problem for us. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.